I'm going to show you guys how to create a YouTube thumbnail in Photoshop. Okay guys, let's jump into it. So first things first, we want to create our new Photoshop project. Go over to new file, go to custom, and inside of custom, you wanna set the width to 1280 and the height to 720. You want the resolution to be 300. Background contents, custom, I'm gonna set it to white. And yeah, we're just gonna hit create, and that is going to set up the exact layout that your YouTube thumbnail should be. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a picture. So I'm going to go to my downloads here, drag in this picture and it beautifully fills the space. But if not, you can drag it to wherever you'd really like. I'm going to drag it in a little bit, set it to the center here. And there we go. Now we have our picture. Now, if you want to add text, you go over to the text tab here, draw out where you want your text. This is Sedona, so I'm gonna write Sedona and put it right up here in the sky. But honestly, I do not like the green at all. So we're gonna go over to the color here in the corner and I'm gonna just drag it to the color that I like. So I'm gonna go with an orange because that kind of fits Sedona's colors. Uh, hit okay. And I'm gonna right click on the Sedona text in the layers tab. I'm gonna click blending options and we're gonna play with this. So I'm gonna hit stroke. And what that does is it puts kind of like a little border around it so that it pops a little bit more. So as you can see here, I can adjust the stroke. Now it seems, yeah, the stroke See how it came in so it was really set high so i'm going to drop it low so that it's more of like a border and i'm going to change it from that same orange color to black so that it's outlined a little bit there's inner glow not going to mess with that too much drop shadow so that kind of will put a shadow around it i'm going to drop the opacity on that and the size of it so that it's much smaller and as you can see now it's more of like a subtle shadow which is really nice so we're gonna hit okay and actually if i wanted to change the font i could too so i just double clicked it and went up to the font up here and i can make it whatever i want so i can make it like this so i'm gonna just go with that and yeah i could be all done right now or i could even drag other elements in and really make it pop if I wanted to. I'm gonna go to the picture and I'm gonna do the um, the effects option. So the picture that I actually dragged in here and then I'm gonna go to outer glow and I'm going to maybe not even use outer glow and go to stroke here and play with this. So as you can see, it drags in a border on the top and bottom but not on the sides. And I think that's because I pulled the picture in so unfortunately, if you pull the picture in, that'll that's probably what will happen. So I'm going to cancel it and actually adjust the transform on this picture. Free transform. Drag it to where it's smaller. Make it fit the actual parameters of our thumbnail here. And I'm going to go down to the effects again. Uh, go to blending options stroke and as you can see there's our border which now is filling the entire space so i can make the border really any color i want so let's do a red border for some reason that didn't register huh really strange blending options stroke there we go I think I just needed to drag that up to the color. And so now it will adjust to any color that I want. So I'm gonna go with red. And now we have a border on our picture, which is really cool. And now I could also add myself to this. A lot of people like to do that. So I'm going to find a picture of myself real quick. 
Okay, guys, so I found a picture of myself. Uh, it's a recent headshot that I just did. And we want to cut out the background. Now, luckily, the background is blurred, so that should help us crop it out much easier so what i want to do is i want to go over to um, this tool right here the quick selection tool and i'm going to hit select subject and as you can see it does a pretty decent job at uh, finding where i am in the photo and outlining it and just for the example of this video i could go in zoom in and refine this so that it's a little bit more accurate because I can see it's cutting out a little bit of my uh, chin strap beard right here but anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to edit hit copy go back to edit hit paste and as you can see now there's two layers of me I'm gonna take the original layer with the background and delete it and now you have me in the photo now obviously my arms aren't in the photo so this would look weird it would look like I have no arms so I'm just gonna drop myself down here to where I'm in the corner just like that and as you can see it's literally that easy and if I wanted to I could go to the blending options on this I could do a little bit of a stroke now that is way too much we just want something really subtle so you know an outline that kind of does look cheesy though like i probably wouldn't add a stroke i would just leave it as is just like that but that is an option if you wanted to and if you wanted to export this and you know be done with it you can just click on the outside here so that you're not clicked on to any of the layers go up to file export export as and then you can choose JPEG quality. I usually do great. Personally, what I do is I will then airdrop this thumbnail to my phone and add it to the YouTube video with the YouTube Studio app. But you can also go on to your computer and do it that way. Just keep in mind, I think there is a two megabyte uh, file size restriction with YouTube thumbnails. So if you do it from your phone, it'll actually convert the photo just to that exact resolution that YouTube is asking for versus with the computer, you have to convert it on your own to the exact file size that you need. But right here, even if I did the gray quality, you could see the photo would only be 1.1 megabytes. So that would be right where YouTube wants the size of the thumbnail. That is how you can easily create a YouTube thumbnail inside of Photoshop. If this video helped you out at all today, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Also, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. That way it ranks higher in the algorithm. But until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.